One of our TikTok subscribers, Raul, asked if we could code Tower of Hanoi, so why not? Here's my version, in 3D, with some extra special features. Today we're coding using the free online editor at editor.p5js.org. First up, we need to put our P5 canvas into WebGL mode so we can draw 3D graphics. I'll also change the background color to sky blue. Let's start by adding a function named Draw Towers to draw our three towers. Starting with the base plate, I'm going to start with a push function call. This will isolate everything I'm about to do within a single block. Later, I will end this block by calling pop. I'll use the translate function to move everything down 150 pixels on the y-axis. Then I want to rotate by 90 degrees, or pi over 2, on the x-axis so that our base plate will lie flat. I can now draw a box to represent our base plate. It will be 850 pixels wide by 300 pixels and 20 pixels high. I then call pop to end this little drawing block. We can now call the draw towers function inside our main drawing loop and take a look at what we've got so far. Next, let's add the three towers. I'll loop three times and create a cylinder for each tower. I need to use translate to put each cylinder in its correct position. I'm also going to make the cylinders silver with a certain amount of shininess using a specular material so that it will reflect light sources once we add them. I want to make the base plate look more realistic, so I've created a tileable wood texture using Stable Diffusion and uploaded it into a directory called Images. At the top of our file, I'll load this image into a global variable named Wood Texture. I can then apply the image as a texture to our base plate. Let's add some ambient light to our scene, as well as a point light and a directional light. Let's call no stroke in our setup function to remove the geometry grid lines. That's looking great. Next, I'm going to animate the camera zooming out when we start the game, and also make it possible for the player to adjust the zoom slightly. I'll create a global variable camera Y, initially set to negative 350 pixels. Then, in our draw method, I'll calculate the X and Z position of the camera. At the very start of the game, we use the frame count to drive the X and Z variables to automatically zoom out. Otherwise, the X variable is driven by camera Y, which the user can adjust, and the Z variable is clamped using the min function. Don't let this confuse you too much. I played around for a while experimenting with different options until I had something I liked. Let's see what it looks like. Nice. Let's now implement the mouse wheel function so the user can adjust the camera Y variable. We'll constrain the variable so that it can be between negative 850 pixels and zero pixels. That works well. Let's now start creating some global variables for our game. We'll keep track of the number of moves the player has made and the number of disks they've selected. We need an array of towers and a variable to keep track of the currently selected disk. I'll create a label variable so that we can display a message to the user and an array for confetti once you've solved the puzzle. I'll also create some global constants. The disk height will be 25 pixels and we'll have 1000 confetti pieces. I'll also create an array of colors for our disks. Let's create a new function called reset game that will reset all the variables correctly to their initial state. We'll loop three times to create an empty array for each tower. This is where we'll store each tower's disks. Then we'll loop and add all of the disks to the first tower. Inside our setup function, we can then call reset game to ensure we're all set up correctly. Like we did for draw towers, we'll now create a draw disks function. This function will loop through each tower and then loop through each of its disks to draw it. We'll get the size of each disk and then calculate its X and Y position based on its position on the tower and disk height. Looking at this code now, there are some magic numbers here I probably should have turned into constants. Finally, we need to call the draw disk function for each disk. Next, we need to write the draw disk function we just called. Again, we'll use push to create an isolated drawing block and use translate and rotate X to orient the object correctly. We'll select a color from our colors array using the size of the disk as the index. Finally, we draw the disk as a torus and then call pop to end the drawing block. Let's take a look at our disks.
I want users to be able to choose a number of discs between 3 and 6, so I'll add a slider control. When the slider is changed, we'll update the num disks variable and call reset game. Finally, I need to give the slider a position on the screen, so I'll just set it to 0, 0. I'll also add a paragraph label to the right of the slider control. I'll calculate the optimal number of moves for a given number of disks using the formula I found on the Tower of Hanoi Wikipedia page. I'll then update the label inside the draw method to include this number, as well as the number of moves the user has already made. We can now start working on making the game interactive by implementing the P5 mouse pressed method. The first thing we'll need to do is work out which tower was clicked on. Let's figure out which tower was clicked on by mapping the mouse's X position to our canvas coordinates. If this position is less than negative 100, the first tower is selected. If it's greater than 100, the third tower is chosen. Otherwise, it defaults to the second tower. If the user hasn't selected a disk already, let's set the selected disk to the smallest disk on the selected tower. Back in the draw disk function, let's set the stroke to aqua if this disk is currently selected. That way, it will be easier for the user to know what happened. If a disk is already selected and the user clicks on a tower, we'll move the disk to that tower. This is achieved by pushing the selected disk onto the target tower and then resetting selected disk to zero. We'll also increment the num moves variable. That works, but we need to remove the disk from its original tower. We'll loop through the towers and if a tower had that disk previously, We'll pop it off its array and break from the loop early. The rules of the game state you can't stack a bigger disk on top of a smaller one. To enforce this, we'll check the top disk of the selected tower, and if it's smaller than the currently selected disk, we'll just unselect the selected disk and return. Finally, we'll know if the user has solved the puzzle by checking if the length of the last tower is equal to the number of disks. We'll set selected disk to null to indicate the game is over. At the top of mouse pressed, we'll allow the user to reset the game by simply clicking anywhere once the game is in the game over state. The final thing I want to do is to throw a confetti party once the game is solved. To do this, up in our draw method, I'm going to loop through our confetti pieces and call update and display on each. While we're playing the game, there won't be any confetti pieces, so nothing will happen. However, once the puzzle is solved, we'll create all the confetti objects. Let's now quickly write this new confetti class. In the constructor, we'll set a random X, Y, and Z position, as well as random values for velocity, acceleration, size, color, and X, Y, and Z rotations. In the update function, we'll check if the confetti has hit the ground. If not, We'll update the velocity by adding acceleration to it, then update the position by adding the new velocity. Finally, we'll randomly change the rotation of the confetti on all three axes. Finally, we can write the display method. Inside a push and pop block, we'll apply the necessary translation and rotations, set the fill color, and draw the confetti as a plane. We should now be able to trigger our confetti party by solving the puzzle. Let's try with three disks. Our project is now finished. If you want to learn to code in bite-sized steps, like this video and subscribe. Until next time, happy coding.